Yeah, sun's coming back out. Today is Sunday, July 28th. It's uh, around 12.30. We just got back down to take the boys for a trot up the driveway. Kind of tire them out a little bit first. Yeah, 78 degrees. I feel a little humid. It's supposed to get a little less so as the day goes on, but then we're going to be getting rain. Look at these gorgeous stargazer lilies. This may be their last year in this spot. We're going to try to move them just because they're always stretching for the sunlight and they probably could be taller if they had a better location. Still getting lots of flowers on the nasturtium here. All right, we got to move Sebastian. Not so much to cover. Hosta's still doing good. But a lot of the flowers are starting to peter out a little bit. Hydrangea, though. Lots of bloomings. And still lots to come. Over here, too. This tire, or this lily in here. Blossoming full. That other stargazer lily back there. Very happy hydrangea. And it's still quite the, the good show on this one. Like I said, it's just been an incredible year. Incredible year for the hosta, the flowers especially. Misha enjoying the weather. He's been hanging out with us all day. We were out earlier doing a lot of Lots of things. A little bit of yard clearing, clearing out some brush, a little bit of gardening, a little bit of starting to take apart the goat sheds. I started removing the doors and roofs on those so I can start tearing them down and make room for the new wood shed that I got to build before winter. Echinacea's doing good. These are the, the ones that first started looking a little old, but these look nice and bright still. And the dolly is coming along. It's still leaning, but it finally has some buds on it here. I did post to Instagram that other rose um, earlier in the week because we figured it was going to peter out pretty quick. But here's this lower one. Oh, there's a little froggy, or not so little froggy. He's been hanging out here. He's been a really good buddy for the garden. Which, now that we're sure what's going on, we have watermelon, and this week I'll remember to get a picture of it. We have kale. Um, it looks like we have a cabbage growing back there, and we have one, two pumpkin plants that are already starting to get fruit bodies on them, waiting for that blossom to open and hopefully pollinate. But look at, and I forgot to bring the tape measure, but look at the size of these leaves on here. They are just massive. All of them. What's up, Misha Kitty? We should probably go over and check out Misha's uh, catnip, too. He was laying over there this morning. All right, what's going to be the best way to get this? Because he's kind of in there. Let me see if I just open this up here and sneak in. He's kind of hiding behind the leaf. But there it is. Sorry, I got my own shadow here. See, there it is. So that's one so far started in here, and it's hard to tell, but there may be more. But yeah, there's the, the cabbage and the kale on the side, and again, the massive pumpkin leaves. Which, again, we did not intend to plant pumpkin over here. This is the second surprise pumpkin, I think, because there was that year that we thought we were planting zucchini over there and back here, and they just took over the yard. I'll see if I can specifically link that video at the end here. Anyone wants to see that? That was, or those videos. That pumpkin was quite impressive. So this wisteria vine is really growing. It's putting in the miles this year all over. It's starting to reach up over onto the shed. No new flower heads, but lots and lots of new growth. 
Okay. Not too much on the peaches, and I did not get through to thin them. I'm looking at them. I'm, I'm trying to see ones that are really crowded. So, so I'll be on this bee bomb enjoying. Sunflowers coming along. And then here we go. We got some new area. Dee was working on this just this morning. Kind of expanding it out because the bee bomb's just been overgrowing this fountain and it's being clogged with petals. But I'm gonna just leave this in position here. See if you notice all the bees through here, all this activity. There's bees, there's the little uh, skipper moths. You got the fritillaries on here. It's just a, a constant bed of activity here. Always being a good boy. You are. Would you like a treat? Because you're being an excellent puppy here. You don't want that? So we're just going to expand out a little bit for now, just to start giving some room. And then long term, we're kind of laying out. We're going to redesign the garden entirely. Kind of divide it in half and move, make some room so we can walk through the middle and access stuff in the middle. So there you go, there's a fritillary. Oh, he just landed on the phone on top of the liatris. Uh, Dee got a lot of good footage of the garden. And yes, of course, the queen of the show here this year. Um, a lot of good footage of hummingbird moths. I believe some hummingbirds as well. Sebastian being a goofball. So I'm probably just going to do a little mashup at the end of uh, just some short clips that we gathered. All right. I guess we can kind of call this the wild garden with the daisies and the black eyed Susans. And we'll try to get it under control so that really the only thing spreading in there are the daisies and the black-eyed Susans and then whatever we plant. By the way, there's uh, one beach plum here. I did see one deeper in, but not a lot. One day we're gonna do something with this a little bit. There's uh, Solomon seal and the lilies that grow in there. The meadow sweet is just, that's wild. That's been growing in here. And it's ferns, there's raspberries. And what it is, is there's a, a circle of stone because back when we moved in, that pole was the satellite dish for the house. And once we got rid of the satellite, I put our weather station up there. Okay, so this is the hydrangea and we have seen some pollinators on here. So this must be one of the varieties that is good for the pollinators. It actually has something to offer them. But again, the size of this. And I did, I meant to bring my tape measure to measure some of these guys. I get the lilies on that side still doing good. And we do have wisteria growing as a vine here, which it was hidden for a number of years and we it was under all the brush. And last year it started breaking out. So it's all along, it's grown along the, the ground on the inside, it's breaking out here, the other side all under the long grass and stuff in there. It's it's kind of a mess. Sebastian, we gotta go backyard in your veg garden. Come on, this way. I see the mole's back. And this is doing great. Oh, looks like we have one trapped uh, blossom head up there under a web. I don't know if I can reach that to do anything about it. But we are getting ready for these to start opening. Getting there. Ah, what else? 
along here. So more of the bee bomb. Hosta still doing good. I'm not even sure if we have purple bee bomb back here, or if all we have is the red. I'll try to remember in editing to look up the name of that. We picked up a couple of those yesterday at the shop, um, and we do. These are the uh, black-eyed Susans that didn't spread from the wild. So whatever more commercial variety those are. Um, we have these guys. And Dee pointed out to me where the dahlia that she planted over here is. So here's one shorter variety. No buds on it yet. And then in between... Is that... Here, yes. And then here's this one. And that one's looking strong. Getting tall enough, but no buds yet. I did notice yesterday as we're bebopping around, we are getting another rosebud on this one. What you got? What's in there? Hmm? You hearing something? You're smelling something? You can dig at it if you want. <sighs> oh, here we are. Mode again. Yesterday. Or Friday evening. Friday evening after work, it came out and mowed again. This stuff is really growing. Of course, as you would expect, grass that grows in a former donkey paddock, there's plenty of nutrients. So it's exhausting. There's just so many rocks and ruts, it makes it really difficult to get our mower through. And you can't put the blade really low. So... On this watermelon, we got some started there. Still got lots of good flowers, good growth. I am gonna give some fertilizer to this because even though this is a good potting soil, from what I've read, they're very heavy feeders. Uh, another pumpkin here, already grown out onto the fence, growing onto the horseradish and grabbing on the horseradish there too. So that's gonna steamroll right across. Speaking of pumpkin, we do have some flowers on this one. It's just uh, kind of far behind. Leaves are looking a little not happy too. And I think just the soil of that area is not so good. Um, so these are pumpkins too, but I don't know if you notice, look at the design of the leaf. So these are the ones I believe we got the seeds for, either the ones we saved from last year from our pumpkins. The ones growing out in the old goat area, we didn't expect those. So we thought we were buying zucchini or something. So we're thinking it's um, got mixed up. Yeah, so there's a pumpkin started under there and a female flower. And I checked yesterday, there's one there too. So we know that these are supposed to be the sugar pumpkins that still got pretty big for sugar pumpkins, but we have no idea what kind of pumpkins those are gonna be out there. Did some research and I realized that our peppers uh, needed more nutrients. So I gave uh, some fertilizer dressing yesterday to all the pepper plants and all of the broccoli and cabbage. A little more potassium and phosphorus. Because even though we put these beds together and we put some good compost in there and worm casting in there to add some nutrition, it's more of a kind of slower long-term nutrition. But once they start getting ready to flower, and look at that. I know that's not just from last night, I must have just missed that, but we have a banana pepper finally starting. Um, but just to encourage them to flower, and then when they get the flower to fruit, they need a lot of good, um, is it the second two on the fertilizer thing, the, the, the two peas on there? And then here too. Again, I, 
I'm just seeing these now. I literally just put the stuff in last night and gave it a good water in. I know they didn't flower and fruit overnight, but hopefully we'll start seeing a lot more flowers on there. Uh, so yeah, this should be a pepper also, and no surprises on there. And we did pick another tomato off of back there. And of course, the cucumber is almost as tall as me now. That one's a little taller than me. This one's a little taller than me. And they're in a race. But look at every flower is fruiting on here. Pollinators are really happy with our garden. It's such a good idea to have the... Oh, who's getting picked tonight? You. Buy another buddy. There's another... Uh, tomato in there ready letting some wildflowers grow along the edges has really been inviting in the pollinators and everybody seems to love the geraniums too anyway so all the peppers on this side we'll keep an eye out on the flowers in there and hopefully that'll make the difference we'll start getting some peppers the cabbage should get, you know, develop a stronger head because it's got plenty of nitrogen. It got nice and tall and nice and sturdy. Uh, the broccoli, see that head there? That's good. We just don't want that to flower yet. Otherwise, we're going to wind up with ones that are only, you know, like this big, which isn't much. We, you know, we're growing this to eat. I'll just keep an eye on it, maybe in a couple of weeks, whatever, might need a little bit more fertilizer. Willow tree is good. There's a time in the morning that it's like the sun comes just down in between all those trees, because there's, it doesn't seem like it, but there is a, a little bit of a clearing as the sun goes through. And it's only the willow that gets lit up by the sun. It's darker in the back and shaded around here. Little by little, some of the sunflowers are getting ready to form flowers. This one too, and this one down here, getting ready. These beans, see now these were probably lacking some nitrogen, which is why the plant didn't get too tall. But for whatever reason, I'm trying to remember where I, I built up a lot of um, manure piles when the donkeys were here you know so maybe because it gets such bright sun it depleted the nitrogen a little bit more but the heavier stuff stayed in the soil but i'm, I'm happy with the the amount of beans next year we're going to do a lot more plants probably have them in a raised bed of their own we got a couple of bumbles working on this thistle and it looks like we've already had birds in here plucking away at that thistle. And I think that's all the highlights for over here. Most of the place. I did finally see, um, I was watching a dragonfly on one of my bamboo rods that I put up strategically around the garden just to give them a little hunter perches and I was watching one and it was working he was sitting up there chilling every once in a while he would jump up and kind of do a little half circle look like he got something and settle down again you're tired huh a good idea tiring you out a little bit ahead of time I'm gonna go see other nasturtium We were watching the chickadees earlier. Do you got a little bit of footage playing in this fountain, taking a little bath? Still waiting on flowers from this one. But this one here is very happy. Some nice flowers on it. Oh, you yeah, happy puppy. You are. Because we're doing good. 
being viney. See, they're saying hi. A little bit of a breeze. That feels good. That's real good. That's about it. I'm going to go download this off the phone and get to work on mowing the lawn since it looks like we're fit, fixing to have a rainy week. At least some thunderstorms every day, which will probably hit in the afternoon. But stay at the end. Like I said, I'll, I'll clip together um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that that we captured with the clips. But right now, Sebastian, why don't you come and get a drink of water? You thirsty? Come on. Oh, he's a beautiful boy. You are. What a good boy. Thanks for watching. Bastion, get down. <laughs> no. Bastion, get down. <laughs> baby. What are you doing, baby? No. Hi. No, no. No, scratch your papa's truck. No. Hey, hi. Hi. Sit on scan. Who's that puppy in the reflection? Who's that? Ooh. No, no. Did something go in there last night? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Did something go inside the truck? Sleeping in there right now? Helping your papa? Yeah? You helping your papa? Yeah? Yeah, you can help by cleaning this mess in your child. No, it's not a dog bowl. Funny it is. Mm. There you go for your clip, honey. <laughs> <laughs>